Hey, what's up guys? It's Charles here with D2APDesigns.com and I'm bringing you another tutorial. I got a request to uh, go over how I do sound effects in my videos and uh, stuff like that. Uh, apparently someone wanted some help with it and so I'm gonna go ahead and do my best to help you guys. Um, first off, you're gonna need sound effects. A um, few places I recommend getting them would be uh, Sony. Um, if you type in SonyCreativeSoftware.com um, it should pull up this page and if you go to content um, this drop down menu here shows a list of different things click on sound effects and as you can see they got a list of different things and down here they got Sony Picture Sound Effects Series Volumes 1 through 10 Sony Picture Sound Effects Volume 6 through 10 and Sony Picture Sound Effects Series Volume 1 through 5 um, and then they also have a thousand and one sound effects um, so any one of those would do um, and then also if you go to videocopilot.net and then go to their products and scroll down you will see um, designer sound effects um, this is also very good um, and then on YouTube you can also find quite a few sound effects if you just do some looking around and also just looking around on the internet you can find some um, sound effects are pretty easy to get um, some are free some will cost money um, I think on YouTube I saw not too long ago somebody um, gave away like 5,000 sound effects um, so you could go find that video I'm sure if you just type yeah, in like 5,000 sound effects pack giveaway something like that sound effects, um, I, you'll probably be able to um, find it I, so anyway I find um, Sony to get your sound effects probably the easiest for me know, to put them in iTunes like or set them sound effects and everything that's what I did so uh, um, that's the program I use. You can use so anyway, the program of your choice. It doesn't matter. Um, so your sound effects, um, either you can have them in a file or some sort of music playing software. I personally, I like to use iTunes. Um, here's all my sound effects. I have over 9.11 gigabytes. Um, I just have an absurd amount of sound effects. Um, but it's good because I need it. And um, yeah, actually this doesn't even necessarily include all my sound effects because um, from what I know, I have a lot of instruments, um, inter instrumentals that aren't even in here. This is mostly um, sound effects like glass breaking, gunshots, explosions, etc., etc. Um, but a lot of my music loops I don't think are in here. So I actually have more. Um, anyway, that's not important. Uh, I believe you can hear my system audio. I believe that's how I have it set up to record. So. Um, Usually what I do is I'll drag in my video file, and then what I'll do is I will find my main ambient layer. Um, basically what the ambient layer is, is it helps um, give a little bit of background sound and also fill in all the places where there isn't sound effects. So like you can see here, here's a sound effect, and then, or here's a sound effect and then there's a big gap in here before the next one and so what the ambient does is it helps fill in this gap to the next sound effect because if you just have a sound effect here and then like a two second gap and then another sound effect obviously that's not going to sound all that great so you want to find an ambient background layer that kind of fits the video and then just have it play throughout the whole thing or you can find multiple ambient layers and mix them up for different parts of the video so maybe you'll have an ambient layer here and then you have an ambient a, a different ambient layer right here or something um, for me I found that this just single ambient layer worked fine for this video and then um, so next what I would do after I find the ambient layer I like I would start looking at um, parts of the video and what sound effects would look good where and so right there obviously I put a swooshing sound because we're flying out like that and then one more I'm, I'm gonna put another swooshing sound here but it's a little bit longer and stretched out so what I would do is once I figure out what's needed where I would come in here and then I would search swoosh and then I would listen through here um, find the one that best suits it and then add it in or yeah just drag it in here and then start adjusting things and lining up correctly and then if I couldn't find a swoosh that I like then I would type in swish 
and if I couldn't find a switch then I type in whirl I mean there's all sorts of different things but generally speaking swoosh will get me what I need so there's that and then we would just keep playing through and adding in sound effects where needed so there's the long swoosh and then here I wanted a bit of a whistling sound almost like a uh, I don't even know how to describe it. So what I did was I would come in here. Um, actually, I think I went under ambience and I looked through um, the different ambient layers that they had or that I have until I could find one that I liked. Um, so yeah, that that sometimes will take a little bit of time if you're not really sure of how to describe the sound. Um, this was slightly whistling, but I knew if I typed in whistle, I wouldn't get something like that. I'd probably end up with a sound effect of someone literally whistling, and not so much a wind whistle like what this is. So, um, this one I just had to look through my sound effects for a little while till I found something that I thought fit. And then we just keep going on here. Again, a little bit of a swoosh. Um, from what I know, this one is the same as this, except I slowed this one down a little bit. Um and I don't think it's quite as loud yeah see like this one's at 4.3 dB and this one's at 0, 0.0 dB and yeah. and so obviously at the end I wanted a much more chaotic violent sound and I had some robotic noises that I just threw in there and that's pretty much it I mean the sound effects is kind of something that's hard to teach. It's really something that you got to learn yourself just by um, your own ears. You got to listen, figure out what works well and um, what doesn't. And over time, you'll get better. Um, but this should probably help give you a little bit of an idea, you know, because a lot of people just kind of throw a bunch of sound effects, but they don't have any background music or anything like that. And, you know, the back or background ambient layers. Um, the background ambience really helps a lot with blending everything together and making sure it doesn't seem um, incomplete I guess. Um, makes it feel a little more natural because um, when is there ever a time in nature or just in your home where there's not some sort of background noise. Either it's a fan running, or people are talking, or music. You know, there's always some sort of ambient noise. And if it's not, and if there's no noise at all, just completely dead silent, it always seems kind of strange. So, I definitely want to fill in the gaps with some ambient noise, and you'll have your sound effects mixed in there, depending on what's happening at the moment. So I hope these tips have helped. Um, I know this isn't the best tutorial, but again, I, it, this seems like something that's really hard to teach. So I just try to give you some tips and help you along. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'm out of here. Peace.